Praise the Lord this morning, saints. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Most High God. Today is the 18th of December. Man. Boy, we're getting to the end of this month. Hallelujah. Flying toward the new year. Amen. The Lord is good. He's gracious, He's holy, and righteous, and just. And we just bless Him today. This is the King's Road broadcast. We're on the King's Road. Amen. So we have to walk in the King's way. Right. Amen. Right. We're going to talk about that today. And we're just going to bless God. We're going to worship Him today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today for this word you have given. And you are working into our lives each and every day throughout these many years, Lord. Hallelujah. All the years we've been walking with you, Lord, you've taught us more and more and more about our warfare. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you so much that you teach us about how to wage a good warfare in Christ and through the power of the Lord Jesus Christ and the cross. Hallelujah. Lord, keep our focus on you this very day and every day. And help us to walk with you, Lord, submitting unto you, wearing the robes of righteousness and the garment of praise, O God. Keep us ever in the palms of your hands, Lord. Lead us in the way everlasting and trample down the enemy under our feet in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to the King. We're going to play a song for you by Christ our life. So, I wanted to say a little bit about this song. Go ahead. This song is <clears throat> called Now is the Time by Christ our life. And it speaks of this is a message to all of us to hear what the Lord's saying to us. Amen. And to act on it and not to rebel, to hear the voice of the Lord what he's saying to us in our heart and in his word and not to rebel against it this is the time to do that amen hallelujah today is the day amen hallelujah today if you hear Harden not your heart As in the rebellion Today If you hear His voice Harden not your heart
whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We have not received the grace of our Lord. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever calls upon Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, God is so good. God is so good, saints. He is so worthy of all praise, honor, and glory. Hallelujah. And he teaches us how to wage a good warfare. Amen. Amen. And do we ever forget how to ra wage a good warfare? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. yeah. We yeah. forget many times. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Yeah. Because we're in this world, this Babylonian system that we all grew up in, and we learned all the ways of Babylon, but now... We are born anew and filled with His Spirit, and we're learning a new way, okay? And sometimes we forget, as the Word says, we're not, we're not having a war with people. Right. It's principalities. That's right. Principalities that are behind what's motivating exactly. that person or whatever, their actions or whatever. We are dealing with principalities. Right. Amen. And also the flesh, you know. Amen. Because a lot of people will blame a lot of things are just bottom line flesh on a spirit. Right. So, and the word also tells us about how to walk so we don't walk by the flesh. Amen. That's right. That's right. Look what Paul says here. We're in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Okay. In verse number 1, I'm going to read just these first three verses here. Or first two verses. It says, Now I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. That's very important there. He He's beseeching them by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence, in presence and base among you, but being absent and bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present, with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh and then he says for though we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh mm -hmm. okay though we walk in the flesh we're in these fleshly temples okay we still have a mind that's able to reason but then, in the book of 1 Corinthians, Paul's talking about in chapter 2, the carnal mind versus the spiritual mind, okay? See, we have a mind, but is it, is it run by the Spirit of God? Is it, are we walking by the Spirit of God? Is it the mind of Christ we're operating by, or is it our own mind, okay? A lot of times we have to, when we're in situations with people or whatever, we have to really seek the Lord as to what to do in our reaction and what to say like he says be slow to speak so sometimes if you come across a situation and you know the Lord doesn't have you respond right away right he will have you be in prayer and seek him about what to do and how to do it and what to say with his wisdom because right here we don't war 
after the flesh. Now, what is war there? War is service in the mil serve in a military campaign to execute the apostolate with its arduous duties and functions. Here it is to contend with carnal with carnal inclinations. inclinations okay, right. we're soldiers. All right. But we don't war with the carnal inclinations. The carnal inclination, okay? The you senses. come up and slap me, then I slap you back. That's the carnal inclination. Mm -hmm. Jesus said if someone slaps you on the right cheek, what? Turn to him the other mm -hmm. also, okay? Jesus said if they compel you to go a mile, go with them two miles, okay? Twain, go two miles, okay? In other words, you're not... Waging a warfare like the world wages warfare, you see. Right. You're waging it like Christ did. On your knees. On your knees. Hallelujah. That's good. That's good. On your knees in prayer. And also in your mind on your knees in prayer. Okay. I'll tell you a story. Let me tell the story about uh, this guy we knew. And this guy was rebellious. He, he we, we talked to him about the Lord quite often. But he was rebellious. We lived in a house at the time on another mountain from here and they called me the preacher right there on that stretch of road there and one day we went we were doing some work for the landlord and we went over to his field and we were going to do some work in his field and when we got out of the truck he started making all these remarks toward me which were vulgar the kid across the, kid the street, across the street yeah. were, were vulgar and, and evil and wicked and the Lord, he told me, he said, don't say one word to him. Just like that, the Lord spoke to me and said, don't say one word to him. So I was obedient to the Lord. I didn't say one word. And he just mouthed off the whole time we were across the road. Mouthing off, mouthing off. So we were there about an hour and we got back in the truck and we drove off. I tell what and, you did when, as we were cutting the Johnson grass out of the field. Oh, the I, I, I was, I was saying, Lord, <laughs> cut the devil out of his life. Cut the devil out of his life. You know, yeah. I was praying for him mm -hmm. and waging a good warfare. And so, see, you don't have to. If someone's bad mouthing you, you don't have to talk to them back. You don't have to say anything back to them. You can just say, "Praise the Lord," just walk away. You see, you because. The devil wants you to get get them back. The devil wants you to. The flesh man wants to get them back. You see. Well, if you take care of it, then why does God need to take That's care right. of it? That's right. That's right. And I didn't. You know? I did what the Lord told me to do. Right. So we went to town that afternoon, and it was about four thirty or five when we came back, and we turned on off the highway onto our road, and we saw him, this guy that was doing this, and this other guy pulling out, and I told my wife, I said, they're gonna get drunk. They're going to get drunk. He's going to get in trouble. Did I? I, I might yeah, have told you he yeah. was going to go to jail that mm -hmm. night or something. Mm -hmm. I think I did. I said he's going to jail tonight. And uh, well, that night they came and got him, took him to jail. Yeah. He ran from the cops and was hiding under a trailer, and he went to jail. And he was in jail for a year and a half. Yeah, mm -hmm. for a year and a half because mm -hmm. he violated his parole. See, God knows how to take care of you. Okay, this is the point of this right. message is right. wage a good warfare. Let and that the best way to do it is let God take care of it. Right. You do what God tells you to do. Right. If God let us say somebody comes to you and says something to you and you know it's not true, it's derogatory, whatever, and the Lord tells you don't say anything, you don't say anything. Right. If the Lord tells you say this, you say what the Lord says right. to say. Right. You see? And cuz a lot of times when you're speaking truth to people and it's hitting them right where they're living. I mean, right where they're living. Right in the situation that they're in. and Right where they're living. And they know they've been doing wrong. And they know they've been sinning in the situation of what they've been doing. But have been trying to make excuses for it. And then the Lord has you come and speak the truth to them. And their reaction is to lash out at you. And to say things that aren't true to you. And, and come against the fact that you don't love and and all these kind of things hurt, they, they say you hurtful, don't love they come against things, you they come you know. against you saying you don't have love in you right, right. and so and saying things you know like uh, uh, don't you ever you know have problems or this or that you know it's it's like you can hear the excuse 
in the things they say. <coughs> Trying to throw over onto you because they know they're wrong. They throw that back at you okay. with words and stuff. So what's our reaction to be? Right. What's our reaction to be? Look at this be? word right here. Stratu, oh my, okay. War. We do not war. That that word is that's where we get the word strategy from. Okay, what's your strategy in a particular instance such as you're speaking of? See, and I ask the Lord that all the time. That's right. What's your strategy, that's Lord, right. in this situation? Put your words in our right. mouth. You know, and See, a lot that, of times He says, "You speak the nothing. truth." Yeah, that's right. You speak the truth to someone, and their strategy is to point the finger at you. Right. Okay, you're the one that's bad. Blah right. blah blah. Whatever. Right. We've had this happen so many times. Yeah. Okay. But what's our strategy? See, prayer. Prayer, yeah. Love, mercy, grace. Speak the truth. Yeah. No matter what, if the whole world forsakes us, if the whole world leaves, it doesn't matter. You We're can't gonna, compromise. We want to wage a good right. warfare in the Spirit of God, by the Holy Jesus Christ, the Holy Blood of the Lamb, hallelujah, and not give in to, to the temptation to rise up. Right. See? Right. And, you know, this has a lot to do the weapons of our warfare. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. If you're compromising in any kind of way in your life, and you know it, you know you're compromising. You know you're doing wrong and going against God's word and going against what he's told if you to If you do. are, that's right. And, and you know if you are. So do we, if we do that. That's right. So, how are you going to wage a warfare? A good warfare. A good warfare. With the weapons of our warfare, when the belt of truth is the main deal right there. That's right. That's right. Okay. How are you going to wage a warfare against the enemy and the hordes of hell when you're in that type of position and refuse to get out of it? Right. Refuse to get out of the compromise. You're not. How can you? That's right. How can you wage a good warfare? And so, see, you're like game for the demons. To right. just come in and torment you with fear and everything else. I mean, because you got a door swung wide open. So this is a real important key factor here that we are not to be in compromising situations. In this time especially, we can't be. Amen. We cannot be. <laughs> the devil has got his forces all out, man. He's going all out. And we cannot be in compromising situation and expect to wage a good warfare. That's right. It's just not going to happen. That's right. We have to keep our focus upon the Lord. See, the weapons of our warfare, it starts with Jesus. He is the main weapon. His walk, His life. He said, as the Father sent me, so send I you. And this is something we forget sometimes and we need to remember the father sent jesus to do his will okay jesus was submissive unto the father doing his will he didn't lash out at people okay he didn't he spoke the truth to people right. and because he spoke the truth to people they were jealous they were envious they were uh coveting against him they were bad mouthing him lying about him doing all these evil things to him. And he said, the way they treat me, <laughs> that's how they're going to treat you. Okay? This is what he said. And instead of just, when you're dealing with people, and you're going to deal with people, you're going to deal with your family, your husband, your wife, your children. Okay? You're going to be dealing with people. Even other... Co-workers. Other believers. believers. Yeah. yeah. You're, de you're dealing yeah. with them. Mm -hmm. And you speak the truth in the love of Jesus. And then you just listen to the Lord. See, you listen to the Lord what to speak and how to speak. And the Lord, he gives you the victory. The Lord gives you the victory. You might not think you're walking in victory sometimes. I know we go through so many things. We don't think we're walking in victory sometimes. We feel like we're being beaten down. But the Lord says, hey, you're not looking at it from my standpoint. Okay. You look at it from my view. See. Because we always ask the Lord, Sharon and I, Lord, search our hearts, you see. Show us if we're doing something wrong. Let us see, Lord. Hallelujah. And there are times where we flub it up, you know. 
We say things, oh, I wish I wouldn't have said that, but it's too late, see? What do I have to do? I have to say, I'm sorry. I have to apologize. I have to say, forgive me, Lord. Hallelujah. You know, nobody's perfect, but Jesus is perfect. And if I'm walking by the Spirit, I'm walking in His perfection, you see? Not my own, because I'm not perfect. He's perfect in me. See? And that's an important thing you said that, you know, when we say things, um, we need to seek the Lord and say, Lord, you know, he's going to give us a convicting sharpness like that in our spirit that we've Amen. done wrong when we speak something that's, that's wrong. That's exactly right. He convicts us. He's going to give us a conviction that that's we've right. done wrong. And, you know, when people come up and say all kinds of stuff to you, it's a good thing to say, Lord, is that true? Amen. Is that true what they're saying? Amen. Uh, and if the Lord shows you, no, it's not true what they're saying. They're just in rebellion to me and just pray for them. Right. You know, um, it would be, be real easy sometimes for us to get into the flesh and just react back, <coughs> you know, to people in a wrong way. But we do our best not to do that right not to give in and to, the to be flesh. walking by the spirit amen uh, at all times and ask the lord just to help us you know because situations will happen where it pulls you down you feel pulled down and the enemy would like nothing more than for us to shut our mouth right but the lord says no you do not let this get to you. You do not let this overtake you. And you do not let this push you down. Right. You, you go, go forward, forward and do what I tell you to do. Right. And just don't, you know. And we have to remember, here's another weapon. We have to remember that that fellow believers, those who you know are born again and filled with the Spirit of God. Fellow believers, whose hands are they in? They're in the Lord's hands. Okay. The Lord's dealing with them just like he's dealing with you. You see what I mean? And you have to remember that and say, well, Lord, you know best. You know best. You take care of it. And just, that's it. And then you you move on to the work, to the challenges, to the, to the, to the tasks the Lord sets before you Keep this the day. Focus right. Keep your focus yeah. right. See, mm -hmm. and this is something Sharon and I are learning more because we have, we have been attacked many times by fellow believers and we've dwelt on it too long you know we've dwelt yeah. on it too long and it just pushed us down it, it hurt us it hurt others because it affects the ministry and we are learning just move on just move on see keep that person in prayer but go on go on forward with the lord and just say thank you jesus hallelujah and that's a weapon see being able to just let it go into the lord's hands and say lord i give it to you and that's the key right there uh letting go right because you know maybe you've been friends with somebody for a long time and talked with them fellowship with them shared your heart with them whatever and then all of a sudden they just you know it's like they're trying to find a reason to turn on you or something and you're just very grieved about it your heart's grieved your heart's heavy about it and it's like that's all you can think about well, what happens is when we don't just give that to the Lord and say, Lord, I don't understand this. All I've been doing is speaking your truth and I don't understand this reaction. I don't understand what's going on, but I'm just going to give this to you and I'm going to let go of this person and give them to you, Lord. You just do what you need to do, right. you know, and to bring them into the right way and show them that they're just wrong. And their actions are wrong. And what they're speaking is wrong. And give them a true repentative heart. When we see that people don't have a repentative heart about their actions and the, the hateful things they say and stuff, it, it's a big concern to us. Mm -hmm. As it should be to the whole body of Christ. Right. Because that means there's something going on in the way of rebellion. There's part of the warfare. You know, See what you're talking about? You repentance. Have to pray right. for people and do warfare for people, um, because a lot of times, you know, the enemy will ta attack fiercely, and the the people come under it, 
and then start believing it, believing the lies and right. all sorts of stuff. So it's like they're down in the ditch or whatever. Right. So we need to pray. And get them out of the ditch. That we need to just pray, you know. See, repentance will... is a battle. It's a war. Is a weapon. It really is. If I fall in my walk, the devil comes and pounces on me, push me down, try to keep me in that rebellion, keep me in that sin or whatever I'm doing, okay? How do I defeat the devil? I repent. See? I repent of sin and say no to the devil. Say, Jesus, your word says, if I confess my sins, you're faithful and just forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And oh God, please come right now. Wash me clean. Wash me whiter than snow. See, that's defeating the devil. You're believing the word. You're repenting. You're saying, God, I want to be fully yours. Not just part of the way, Lord, and hold back this little part for myself, but all the way, you see. And the Lord, he takes you up. Hallelujah. He receives you. When you have a contrite and broken heart. Contrite and broken spirit, heart before the Lord, that is a weapon against the enemy. Hallelujah. Amen. In yeah. families, talk about families a little bit. With children, like if you're a child today, maybe you're listening to this, you're 18 or 19 years old, and you're in college, and your parents, they're just really, you feel like they're just treating you bad as you're walking with Jesus or whatever. How can you come against that? How can you wage a good warfare Okay, what are your weapons? Gentleness, meekness, temperance, the fruit of the Spirit, see? In your family, okay? Because your parents want to get you mad and angry and, you know, where you, you act in a certain way which is unchristlike. You see right. what I'm saying? And Push your button. Right, push your button, okay? And, <laughs> the then, it works the other, and it works the other way with yeah. parents and children, see? And husbands and wives. And so how can we wage a good warfare? What is the weapons that we use? Meekness, gentleness, you know, all these different fruit of the Spirit, humility, okay? This is a weapon. And the Lord says, use it, utilize it. Prayer I am in you. Prayer is a major weapon. Prayer, I yeah, that's, the, I mean, that's worship and adoration and prayer, amen. We have to also be very careful. This is like, you know, what was mentioned earlier is, you know, if we're in a compromising situation, we're not going to wage a good warfare. I mean, That's how right. in the world could we, right. you know? And it also has to do with your connections. Do you have wrong connections that you know are wrong? And they're wrong because you're compromising. See, you're in a compromising situation for the word and for what God's told you to do or whatever. And so, how can the warfare be even waged at all in that type of situation? Right. You know, the Lord tells us that we have to forsake all to follow him and be his disciple. Right. You know, even our family. Even our family. That's right. You know, if we continue in a, a connection with even family that is a bad connection, it can pull us down. Right. It can pull us down. You know, the best thing we can do for our families is pray, and a lot of times is let them go and let God have them. We can't do a better job than God. Amen. Amen. And a lot of times it will prevent them from being convicted of their sin Right. if we're enabling them to, to be in the sin right. and not okay. trying to let God have them so they can follow their face, so to speak, before God. Amen. We can't do that. See, you know, Jesus knows how to make the circumstances where you fall on the rock, right. okay, and be broken. Right. All right. He does. He right. can. Right. But every time when a child's wanting to fall, going to fix, fixing to fall on the rock, the parent comes in and scoops them right. up, see, right. and holds them, right. helps them, see. Well, the Lord says, no, 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 see. Like that guy, when he was bad-mouthing me, if I'd have went over there and said, listen, man, you're speaking to me like the devil and blah, 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 you know, and all this stuff. See, would that have helped that guy? See, in that particular instance, no. He'd have just foamed at the mouth more and laughed and hollered and, you see. And he might have really got into a... A fisticuff. A I mean, he might have hit me, you know. But that I didn't go over there because I was afraid he was going to hit me. I, I didn't go over there and didn't say nothing to him because God told me not to say right. anything to him, see. And so when I didn't, 
then God took care of it. And yeah. so he had a year and a half or so to think about it while he was laying up in the prison, okay? Out in whatever town that is, west of here. See, the Lord, he, he can take care of things, okay? We're always one. We grew up in a society where, oh, we got to rescue this person or rescue that person. And sometimes it's God saying, I can't even throw anybody in the ditch anymore, you know, to try to rescue them, see? Because everybody's trying to help everybody. And it's, I'm not saying don't help people. I am saying you need to when God tells you to. And if you see a brother or sister in need and you can help them, help them. Okay. But on the way, God might say, hey, wait till, wait a couple of days. I'm trying to teach that person something. You see what I mean? And, and there is a warfare. The, really, the weapons of our warfare basically boil down to what, Sharon? Huh? Just doing what God tells us to do. Amen? Amen. And then we win the victory. Yeah, you're saying that a minute ago, but I know that we we should not uphold people in their sin. No. Amen. We should not uphold them in their sin. That's right. The Lord talks about upholding the wicked. Well, if someone is in blatant sin, that's wickedness, isn't it? Right. We're not to uphold the wicked. That's right. And that's, that's all right. there is to it. Amen. And... This is a real crucial thing right here because there is a warfare. There's a warfare that we have to wage in this time, in this hour. And if we're in a position <coughs> where it's going to be very hard or practically impossible for us to wage the warfare, such as what was mentioned, compromise, some kind, being in sin and knowing it, and then here comes the enemy. How can you throw it off? How can you throw it off? Right. If you're in a compromising situation. So it's important for us to be before the Lord and have him search our hearts and say, Lord, show me what I need to see. Show Amen. me what I'm not seeing. Right. Make it clear to me about everything. You know. Amen. Look at this verse now. Verse 4, 2 Corinthians 10.4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. See? Mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So they're not carnal, right. which means you can't use carnal means to fight it. Right. Amen. You have to use spiritual means and That's the right. weapons that he's get, give us in the belt of truth. I'm going to go back to that. Yeah. The belt of truth. That's right. Now look at that. Carnal means the flesh, pertaining to flesh, by extension bodily, temporal, or by implication animal. Unregenerate. Unregenerate. Mm -hmm. Carnal, fleshly. Mm -hmm. See, it's an unregenerate way, see, that many people try to deal with family members it's, it's in an unregenerate unregenerate way mm -hmm. and you can't do that no. and i know i grew up with people every time they get in trouble with the law their parents would bail them out every single time and they never learn not to get in trouble that's with the, the concept law. we're talking about i know here. Yeah. every single time i mean they they get pulled over for drinking and they go to jail and their parents would be right there paying the 900 bucks to get them out of jail wouldn't even let them stay in jail two hours okay and it's like they had no they, consequences. They to had their no actions. consequences yeah. to their actions. See, that's what and, we're talking about. And it's about. like Jesus says, "Wait a minute." The Word says, "If I sow to the flesh, I'm going to reap corruption." But some people today, in 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 Christianity, they they so coddle their their children when they're growing up. This was back in the 70s, now in the 80s. Okay, I mean, and they were coddling their children. You see, and wasn't teaching them anything. See what I mean? But not in my family. You did something and you got it. Okay. You I mean if you did something and you did something out in society, you paid the price for yep. it. Okay. Yeah. And that's the way it went. Mm -hmm. And we learned. Okay. Oh, that was a mistake. You see. And the Lord is so faithful. He will keep us. Let's wage a good warfare. Look at this now. To the pulling down. Okay. They're mighty. Our, our weapons. Okay. Are mighty. Okay. Look at that word. Possible, able, mm, amen, possible, power, strong, okay, powerful or capable, you see, that's where that word dynamite comes from, dunatos, okay, and dunamis, they're real close together in the Greek, 
and then to the pulling down look at that demolition <laughs> demolition okay figuratively uh, extinction yeah. destruction pulling down of strongholds strongholds mm -hmm. okay there's a stronghold somewhere see what is it it's some kind of thought you got from your third grade teacher okay it's some kind of thought that uh, your uncle Jimmy told you or something happened your friend Billy or someone spoke it to you or you heard it on the TV or something some kind of thing took lodgment and you've got this stronghold. Maybe you were one who gave a stronghold to somebody. Well, repent. Repent. Make it right and say, Lord, forgive me. See, and go to that person and say, forgive me. See? And then, and then it breaks it down. See? It pull it down. Pull it down. See? Hallelujah. And casting down imaginations. Right. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Okay, now hold it right there. I want to get back to this and then we're going to go through this whole verse right here. To the pulling down of strongholds. We need to look at this word right here. Okay. Fortify. Fortify. This is a stronghold. Holding safely. See, it's like the enemy has this lodgment in a person's mind. A castle. I find this interesting. Argument. Argument. Oh, yeah. See. That could be a strong. It is. Yeah. It's argument. Uh -huh. Stronghold. Uh -huh. See. Arguing. You, you speak the truth argument. to somebody and they argue with you. You <laughs> see. That's their, their stronghold. They've got a problem with that truth. They have a problem with the truth. Okay. That's what it boils down to. Yeah. Because see, Jesus. Listen, saints. Jesus sees our heart like no one else. Okay. And. If my wife speaks a word to me and I rebel against that word, hey, there's a stronghold there. See, I've got this thing going on. You see what I'm saying? And I say, Lord, forgive me. I, I come back with a what? An argument, mm -hmm. right? You mm -hmm. see? You'll be right as day. And I argue. Well, what happened? What's going on there? Yeah. There's a stronghold, see? There's something. And I have to repent. I have to say, Lord, forgive me. And Lord, thank you for having sharing tell me that you see mm -hmm. praise the lord mm -hmm. say lord forgive me okay okay now go ahead go in and verse five now go into verse five now i'm my tongue is getting to it so go ahead casting down imaginations Ooh, okay casting, casting down. down imaginations those are things that we just kind of pull out of the air isn't it <laughs> you know pulling things out of the air to imagine this and imagine that and this scenario and that scenario, but it is any of it the truth? Mm -mm. So we it's an imagination, isn't it? Right, right. We cast those down. Look at that word, casting down, Sharon. Look at that word. Casting down is to lower, to demolish, to mo demolish it. <laughs> <laughs> cast it down, destroy it. Look at the Greek word. The imagination. Look at this Greek word. What is that word right there in the English? I can't even pronounce that. Cathario. It's where we get the word to cauterize. Okay. In other words, oh. if, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> Cut it, off. It, yeah. yeah. Well, when, when there's a vein busted, you cauterize it. You stop the bleeding. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. You see? And so you're casting down. Okay. You're, you're throwing it down. You're refusing to go there. Imaginations. Okay. Imaginations. But there it is. Reasoning. Reasoning with reasoning, that old carnal mind. Conscience. Yeah. Conceit. Yeah. Imagination. Thought. thought. And Cast and, it boy. down. Destroy <laughs> it. Demolish those things. And every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. Mm. Every high thing. All right. There's the, there it is again. The high thing. The altitude. Mm -hmm. See? It's 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 right here in the mind. See the a warfare barrier. is taking it's place. It's a barrier. Amen, amen. It's every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. Mm. It's a barrier, isn't it? Against the knowledge. Yeah. Of God. Wow. And bringing into captivity. Okay. Bringing into captivity. Every to make thought. it captive. See. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Every thought, every thought, perception, purpose, intellect, implication, okay, mind. 
this right every thought to the obedience to the obedience of Christ compliance submission, submission. obedience of Christ so what does that mean it means when we have these things in our mind thrown in our mind and we we know the word well enough to know that's not a thought from God so what do we do throw it out throw it out bring it into obedience right. to Christ right this is not from the Lord this is not a thought from the Lord get behind me Satan right that's right you know get behind me Satan praise the Lord and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Right. To revenge, to vindicate, retaliate, punish. Mm -hmm. Okay. All disobedience when your obedience, look at that word obedience. When your submission, compliance, right, obedience. It's fulfilled. Mm -hmm. See. That, I guess what the apostle here is saying, and I believe the Holy Spirit showed me right now, is that when you're walking, saints, with the Lord, and you know that you're walking before the Lord, and you're being obedient to the Lord, and you see a brother or sister erring from the way, they're going from the way, okay, you speak to that one, see, and you can bring them, you can be a force of good, the Lord can use you as a channel to communicate His Spirit to that person, in order to bring repentance and bring them back into the fold, see, hallelujah. And but then, it's hard to do that if if we're not being in obedience ourselves, you know. It's hard to turn around and tell someone else that when you're not being obedient. That's right. That's what he's that's, saying. That's right. You know, you can't be going around telling people to do this and that when you're not obedient yourself. That's right. Now look at verse 7 here because this is important too. Do you look on things after the outward appearance? Huh? See, looking on things after the outward appearance is not waging a good warfare. Mm -mm. Okay, it's it's uh, waging a bad warfare because by the flesh you could be judging somebody wrongly. That's right. Do you look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again that as he is Christ, even so are we Christ. Okay, for though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, Paul here's talking which the Lord hath given us for edification and not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed. See, see, God's given his authority to his people. Okay, he's given us a level of authority. He's given you a level of authority. Okay, but it's not to destroy people. It is to edify them, to bring them into the truth where they can be filled and full. Hallelujah. Yeah. And their ministry will grow. Their ministry for the Lord will blossom. You see? To prompt them to, into the right way. Into the if right way. If they're on the wrong way. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not for destruction. It's it. And then he says, not for your destruction. I should not be ashamed. Okay? The Lord, he, let me read that again. Which the Lord hath given us for edification. Okay? This authority. Okay? For edification. Verse number 8. And not for your destruction. I should not be ashamed that I may not seem as if I would terrify you by letters. See, Paul, he was, they were saying, oh man, he's really mean to us. See, and this is what they were saying about Paul. When he wrote him the first letter to the Corinthians, man, he was, they were like, oh man. But they say the, the name Paul means small, you know, that he was just a little guy. But he's saying here, listen, let me read this first two, these two verses, nine and 10. That I may not seem as if I would terrify you by letters. For his letters say they are weighty and powerful. But his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible. See? And then, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And this is, they're, they're making a wrong judgment here about Paul. See? Yeah, by the way he looks. Right. And they're and making a wrong judgment saying. about his authority. See? Let such an one think this, that such as we are. In word, by letters, when we are absent, such will we be also indeed when we are present. And see, so he's saying, okay, you know, you're saying all this, all right? When I get there, I'm going to be just the like my same letters. As I am right okay, now. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what you get with this ministry. You're going to get the truth, and 
we're hopefully not going to model coddle you, okay? But we're going to bless you. We're going to help you. We're going to pray for you. And we're going to love you, okay? And that's what God's commanded us to do. Feed the sheep. Well, you don't stomp on a sheep, you see. You speak the truth to that sheep. You better get yeah. back in line over here. Now, they I'm may think you are. i get the club are. after you. They may think you are. Let yeah. me talk about a shepherd for a minute. The shepherd has the big hook, the big shepherd's rod, and the hook with the hook on the end. That's to bring the sheep from the cliff. He fell over the cliff, bring him back up. And then he has a club, okay? And if that a sheep's real a, a real shepherd, mm -hmm. that's right. He has a club, and it's about two feet long, and it's heavy on one side. And he can throw that club. He could throw it 100 yards and hit a sheep and get it back in line. Mm -hmm. See, the good shepherd. All right. And then also, when one rebels and keeps jumping the fence and, and trying to drag others to do that too, to go into an area they're not supposed to go to, if they continue to do that and be a rebellious sheep, he's got to... Discipline severely. Take care of them. That's right. That's right. And if you've never read the book, go get it. Maybe you have it on the shelf. It's called uh, A Shepherd Looks at the 23rd Psalm mm -hmm. by Keller. Go read that book and you'll get a good understanding. This man was a shepherd. And he ties it in with how the Lord Jesus, who is the good shepherd, shepherds us. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Paul says here, now we're talking about the weapons of our warfare. Listen to what Paul did. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among their se themselves are not wise. See, all this, oh, look at this. And, you know, this, this, this is happening today in the world, in the church. See, people compare themselves among themselves. Mm -hmm. See. And Jesus says no to that. No. Let's wage a good warfare. Paul says in verse 13, But we will not boast of things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule, okay, which God hath distributed to us, a measure to reach even unto you. See, there's a measure God's given you, saints. Hallelujah. There's a, there's a job. There's a job. So to speak. Amen. And all the authority and everything that's needed for that job, God measures out. That's right. For each saint. Amen. For each uh, appointed place. Right. So if someone tries to get out of their place and take someone else's place, are you going to have the strength and authority and everything that's needed for that place? No, you're not because God didn't give it to you. Right. See, everybody has their own place, and God's given them everything that's needed for that place. Hallelujah. So it's important not to be comparing among ourselves. Right. We're individuals before God Almighty. Right. He birthed us for a purpose. And we're Each one, individual. And we're one body of Christ together. See? And all those, everybody we operating. We need each other. Right. Hallelujah. Everybody operating in the office that God has given them personally. What a unity there is. Right. But there's so much bickering and backbiting and jealousy and so much stuff that God wants to do away with in right, his body. Right. And he's saying, look it, you guys. I have created you in the womb of your mother for a purpose. I've given you a purpose. And you're trying to come over here in a place I didn't give you. And I haven't prepared you for or given you anything for that place because that's not your place. Hallelujah. Over here, your place is empty because mm -hmm. you're not doing right. what I created you to that's do. Right. See? Amen. So that's where the Lord wants to do away with all of that and say, be content with the place I have placed you and in the way I have placed you Amen. and what I have put in you for the body of Christ. Be content with that. Hallelujah. And walk in that and operate in that and... What a change Amen. will there be when that takes place with the whole body. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 14. For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure. As though, just what you were saying. As though we reach not unto you. For we are come as far as to you. Also in preaching the gospel of Christ. Not boasting of things without our measure. That is of other men's labors. See, there you go. See? Mm -hmm. But having hope when your faith is increased that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule 
abundantly. Oh, praise God. Paul's saying, when you're growing in grace, you're growing in faith, that's increasing me. Right, see, right. that's helping me. Hallelujah. That's why. But it works the other way around. If, right. if the body of Christ is falling down, it has a tendency to want to pull the other parts of the body down. Right. And it does, really, spiritually. <coughs> you know, it's so exciting to us and just blesses us so much when people receive the word and they act on the word and it, it works in their life. Mm -hmm. in a changing way right and you can just see it and you can hear it by the way they talk and everything it's just an awesome thing to behold right and you know then it's like lord you know it just warms our heart but when the opposite happens and it's like people i don't care how many messages they hear they just keep going on in the same way they are that's a very discouraging thing. Yeah, it's very discouraging. And it's a very heavy, weightful thing. But is that our fault? No. Is no. that God's fault? No. No. There's something going on in that person's life that they're not willing to give up and they're not willing to turn away from. And they continually blame everyone else around them for them not doing what they're supposed to do. Right. And that's just not working. Right. And they'll find that out sooner or later down the road. So, it's important for us to obey the Lord, and when He convicts our heart of something, don't buck up against it. Amen. Bow the knee. Right. Hallelujah, Lord. Let us remember that word today. Bow the knee, because Amen. it's only going to benefit. If we don't bow the knee, and we reject that word, and we turn away from it, and rebel against it, what happens? We keep going down that road, That's don't right. we? That's right. We keep going down that road, and then we're still blaming everybody for everything right. that's going on in our life. Throwing the blame everywhere but where it should be, right on us. Because it would be our fault if we've disobeyed. It would be our fault if we've rejected the Word of God. You know what's coming to me? Artificial roads. No thorns. Mm, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Artificial roads. Mm -hmm. okay. Hybrid. Hybrid. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they get rid of the thorns. Mm -hmm. And the Lord says, no. See, there, there's a cost to walking with Jesus. There is. Amen. Mm -hmm. Look what Paul says, and I'll finish this chapter out. See, he's saying he wants them to be increased, that we shall be enlarged. When faith is increased, that we shall be enlarged. This is verse 15, the last part of it by you according to our rule abundantly to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you and not to boast in another man's line of things made ready to our hand but he that glorieth let him glory in the lord for not he that commendeth himself is approved but whom the lord commendeth and that's the important thing amen yes amen. you know because man lifts up man that's right. You know, and it's usually by appearance. You know, I was reading something in Austin Sparks about what the Lord considers his true ministry. And, you know, man looks at how big it is, how right. prospered it is, this or that, whatever. Right. That's not what God looks at. The Lord looks at the spiritual aspect, and it's small to right. look on in the natural realm. Right. But it's not small in, in the God's eyes. That's right. It's That's right. large in Hallelujah. God's eyes. Hallelujah. But see, the thing is, the Lord is not going to let anyone get the glory for his work. Amen. And really, those that try to get the glory for his work, he usually will knock them down to size. Mm -hmm. And that's just the truth. Because he said, no one else is going to get the glory. Man, no flesh shall glory. No in flesh presence. shall glory in my presence, he said. That's right. So, you know, he has a, a way of doing things where he makes sure that no flesh gets the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. So we have to, and then he also finds out how really faithful that we are faithful to the call. He mm -hmm. wants to know how faithful we are to the call right. that he's placed on our life. And everybody that's a born-again Christian has a call in their life. That's right. Okay? So he wants to know how faithful we are. You know, some people, he's got everybody in the 
army you know there's in a real army they have those that are on the front lines they have those that bring the supplies right they had those that are in the in the middle the, the triage yeah they yeah have, so mean, see there's people so in every right. but what if someone says well i don't want to be in that part of the army right well what if god birthed you to be in that part of the army then what you're saying is i don't want to do what your, god wants me your to do. will god mm -hmm. i want to do my will because I would like a place that's a little more acceptable to me. Right, a little more and, notice. And a little more right, notice right. where I get a little more notoriety. Well, what are we saying to God when we say that? We're saying, I don't want the place that you've put yeah. me. We're charging him foolishly. Yeah, and that's dangerous to I do that. It. It so is. we need to say, Lord, I want to be in the center of your will, doing exactly what you birthed me to be. Do you know you were birthed for a reason? You were birthed for a purpose. Hallelujah. And you know, the Lord shows us what that purpose is in our life. Amen. But a lot of times that's rejected by people because they want another place. They want someone else's place, you know, mm -hmm. when God hasn't birthed them or trained them or put anything in them for that place that's right that's right that's why there's so many disasters now yeah. you know in the body of christ yeah. people are in wrong places that's right that god has not placed them in that's right nor birthed them for nor given them the authority for jesus said take the low place right he told us what place to take mm -hmm. you take the low place servant right servant it's and like i was um Peter said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and in due season, he will exalt you. I was reading another quote by Elizabeth Elliot, and she was saying, when you think that a job is too low for you, beneath you, if a job is beneath you that God is asking you to do, she said, just think about Jesus stooping and washing the disciples' feet. Right. That's right. So that's pretty powerful right there, yeah. see, because he took the lowest of the lowest yeah. tasks mm -hmm. and he did it faithfully mm -hmm. and even washed Judas's feet. Yeah. His betrayer. Right. Yeah. Man, oh man. We got our way to good warfare, saints. This is the message for the day on this, the King's Road broadcast, because it's so important that, that we be obedient to Christ. And I feel like, I guess this week, the Lord's going to be talking about warfare gonna be talking about these things because there's so much just he's just showing us right now as we're speaking when we start these messages each morning it, it, sometimes we have a tendency to think it's going to go a certain way and then the lord takes it another way you know and it's just beautiful how the holy spirit is just moving and doing that and i have to yield to that you see all the time yield to the holy spirit and say holy spirit your way not my way okay because no, no, no. I don't want to do that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You want to pray? Lord, I thank you for this message. And I thank you, Lord, that you are still working in us, Lord. Hallelujah. You're still working even today. And I pray, Lord, that you don't stop working. That you keep working in us, your will. And I ask you that those that are listening today, that you will just speak to their heart. Speak, I pray you have spoke through us to them through this message, Lord. And that they will not forget it, Lord Jesus. And be content where you've placed them in the body of Christ. And love you enough to do your will, Lord. And love you enough to obey you, I pray. Jesus name yes father and thank you for that Lord and, and just fill us with your fire today as we go forward in your name Lord Jesus and let us walk in humility with each other Lord and just love you praise you and glorify you as you throw the devil down under our feet in Jesus name amen hallelujah glory to the king hallelujah God is good isn't he mm -hmm. he's so faithful so faithful you can write us here behold oh it's not that email it's the other one the yeah. king's road i do that oh every monday 
The Kings Road 2000 at <laughs> gmail.com. The Kings Road 2000 at gmail.com. And we'll write you back. Hallelujah. Pray for you. And we do pray for you. Even if you don't write, we're still praying for you. And we just bless God for all the saints. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord bless you, keep you, make his holy face to shine upon you. The Lord our God lift up his holy countenance on you and grant you peace. The Lord be gracious unto you. His name, authority, and character be in and upon your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.